Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Star Wars Lads. We've got our final predictions and speculation for you all for The Bad Batch, not just season three. The entire show is ending this coming week. We're going to talk about all the things we think are going to happen in this final episode of The Bad Batch, as well as some of our thoughts on what the runtime might be, because that's been a big topic of conversation here on our channel. So we're going to get into that. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel for more Bad Batch content, and come join us for our live stream where we talk about the final episode of The Bad Batch, 7 p.m. Pacific time on Wednesday, the day the last episode comes out. You'll want to join us there for all of our discussions. And you guys can send in your chats, your live Q&As, your questions, your theories. We can speculate about the future. We can talk about the episode. It's a lot of fun. Make sure you join us there. So let's talk about this finale. The Bad Batch Season 3, the ending has come a bit more, let's say, paced out than we thought it would originally with the beginning of the season. You know, the beginning of the season felt like there's a lot of answers unfolding, a lot of things about the, the lore of Star Wars going to be explored here in this. We get to this finale and there's still almost none of those questions answered this looks like it's a bad batch show as its title is and has the seasons have all told us in every finale so far in season one and season two so we do have this title the cavalry has arrived which does indicate a, a possible joining up of forces or other clones might be involved that's an interesting title as well as the fact that we have a 15 episode season this year for season three when season one and season two were both 16 episodes. Season one, even kind of like a 20 episode season, considering the first episode was an hour and 10 minutes. So now we're getting to the finale of this entire show. Will it only be 24 minutes? They haven't said it's going to be more. Sonic, let's get into this. What are your thoughts on what's going to happen in The Cavalry Has Arrived? And what do you think is going to be the runtime of this final episode? Well, I'm going to start with the second one. It's because we've been talking about it a lot on our live. We've been talking about it for weeks offline. Like we, This has been something that has been coming more and more to the forefront. And every episode that we've gotten has pushed the plot forward. But it hasn't necessarily like delivered on like, okay, We've gotten all the big heavy things we have to get out of the way for the finale to then explore and do its own thing. Or we've got all the setup and all the pieces for the finale to definitely be like 70 minutes or 48 minutes or whatever it might be. I think it'd be brilliant. It'd be a really nice bow on top if they did sort of the inverse of the season one premiere, like you said, being an hour, 10 minutes. If we could get that for the series finale, I think that would be a great way to really just finish off the story strong. And I, I don't think season three story has been like lacking in any way. But I do think that if we do end up with like a three episode length finale, it'd be kind of the same way how a lot of season one story is in those first three episodes. It is a lot about setting up the Empire, setting up the Bad Batch, setting up why things are not going the same way for them as they are for other clones, etc. And it would make great sense to like, you know, finally get to be able to explore the base, explore all the storylines that have been set up in the penultimate episode and throughout the back half of season three. And you would be able to really chew on every single detail that has been given to us while still teasing like future shows and everything else. I think asking for three episodes long of a finale is a little too much. But I'm I'm pretty confident that we can get a double length episode just because it would be kind of sad that you couldn't put out an extra 20 something minutes and cut off an episode from the season, right? And just be like, oh, no, we're just not going to deal with the fact that this is a shorter end, right? I think no matter what, if you do that, you'd make the story kind of come to a close with a whimper instead of a bang. And I mean, every Star Wars fan who's been watching this or is planning on watching this who's been binging to catch up, they want it to be a strong, strong ending and something that you can just almost watch on your own, right? Just continuously be like, okay, I love the Bad Batch. But sometimes I just want to go back to this episode. And this would be a great way to end the show. Have like something almost super self-contained, all the threads of all the seasons just 
be fully played out. All, all the pieces have been on the board. Now we're going to actually duke it out. It might be asking a lot. I don't know. But I, I, I'm going to still say at least we'll get a double length episode. So that way we can get like a proper 16 episode season. For what I think will happen, ugh, I mean, it kind of comes back to the title, right? I think the cavalry has arrived until like the end of the episode 14. I would have been saying, oh, yeah, I can definitely see it being Rex already being informed, the signal sent out by Echo with all the data he's collected on the scientific vessel, what he's gotten on Mount Pantis, etc. And I still think he will arrive, but I think they're going to be more of like a tag at the very end of whatever happens on Pantis. I think the cavalry now almost kind of feels like it's going to come from inside the base. You know, we know Echo's like a reg at the end of the day, right? He, he identifies as a reg just because he became a member of the Bad Batch doesn't mean that's not who he was for such a long time and what was taken away from him. So a big point for him was telling Amiri Carr, I'm here for everybody, like all the prisoners that you've been experimenting on. And yeah, Amiri like kind of dropped the truth bomb. Like, oh, we also have like a bunch of force sensitive children. And I, I, you know, knowing Echo, he'll he'll try to help everybody. But I think the cavalry in this case definitely does mean like the prisoners that he'll eventually be able to help break out. I don't know if he'll be able to directly do that because Emery is going to make him kind of come with her as like, you know, some sort of bodyguard or just some special case attendee, help get Omega and the three children out or four children, I guess. And then, you know... I think that's where the cavalry actually comes in because of the Zillow Beast that's been revealed, right? We saw it in season two. It was a Chekhov's gun for a long time. Genuinely worried they're just going to show it to us in one episode and never again, just like they did in the Clone Wars. Because it was, it felt like so great to have it back and feel like, oh, we're going to actually progress this very interesting plot line that Palpatine has already been thinking about pretty early on in the Clone Wars. Now that it's like here actually in play and now that we've seen that it's like in a tank, basically electrocuted the whole time, not allowed to move around. Yeah, I mean, once that thing gets interfered with an Omega, clearly has plans to do so. Once everything of like the literal superstructure of Tantus, or at least that mountain of Mount Tantus, I can just totally see the prisoners below, above, whoever's been surrounding the vault. I'm sure some will die, but I think a lot will be able to be like, oh, everything has lost power or like has literally been broken through by a godzilla like monster okay and then possibly running into the bad batch or they see the bad batch with their stripped armor kind of shooting and stunning some of these tk troopers and all they'll be like all right we'll go with those guys follow the leader right they know exactly what they're doing so I, yeah I, I can see that happening i i think that's the cavalry i think the cavalry is going to come from within you know even if they don't all make it they're going to be once almost arriving to the help of Omega and Echo arriving to the help of Wrecker, Hunter, and Crosshair, we still have that open thread of Rampart. He's just been taken by the TK troopers after a rather unceremonious and hilarious end to his uh, journey with the Bad Batch on Tantus. And I'm sure he'll be able to like tell them what where they're trying to plan, what they're trying to do. He's probably overheard things, right? He, he Even though he doesn't necessarily like listen or care about these guys he's not stupid by any means and he he also made a good point of saying you and me crosshair we're the same right we're all going to look out for ourselves so i wouldn't be surprised with his you know time that he spent with crosshair if he has an understanding of what crosshair would do and what the batch would do to try to infiltrate the base so i could totally see omega be halted i could totally see the batch be halted then the cavalry comes out Mount Tantus is exploding all around. I'd, I'd love to see the commandos at the very least hesitate or turn. I'd love Scorch. He's been name dropped. You've got to do something with him. If not this show and another show, like he has to have some sort of redemption because he, it's just not cool to leave Republican commando fans feeling like this guy's just going to be the villain forever. I'd like him to at least have like a momentary change of heart or like do something to a CX or do something to Hemlock. Either way, Hemlock dies. It's just a fact. And I'd like to see one of his closest associates who's never done anything to him, like only purposely, dutifully carried out everything he's asked, be the one to finally be like, no, man, I'm, I'm done. Like, this is not it. This is not fair. Maybe he doesn't even know the extent of what's going on. And seeing like maybe some of his brothers be experimented on, mutilated, it'll be crazy. But I wouldn't be surprised. 
And I, you know, there's also the possibility that there's been some crazy things happening with the Zillow Beast, but all the blood samples kind of being all transported relatively near its location. So I, I'd, I'd be very surprised if it's just limited to seeing how we can make CX clones and all that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Zillow Beast is like way bigger, way more enraged. Maybe the water and the electrocution kind of keeps it to the regular size that it is. But once it's broken free, everything just starts mutating and going crazy. Other than that, I think the only like loose thread that we would have is the CX-2. He needs to come back in this finale for sure. And I think you mentioned it before, Liam. I, I, it should just be like a boss fight for Crosshair to definitively say that, hey, like I'm not like this. I have changed and I can prove it here and now. I, I, I think Crosshair, with the way things have been set up, will be the only member of the Bad Batch that I, I was on the train of having Hunter also die with him. But at this point, I think I think it just might be Crosshair. I think Hunter has kind of reestablished himself as a leader again, that his reunion with Omega is what's going to be like that happy ending. It can't just be Omega coming out of it with the rest of the Bad Batch or whoever remains of the Bad Batch. I think it has to be the two together because they were, they were the beating heart since the series premiered. So yeah, a, a lot of threads. I think a lot of it just all comes to a head because the Zilla Beast destroys everything and suddenly floors are mismatched. Everyone's together and we hopefully end with like a, a nice escape and a happy epilogue scene. But otherwise, just the destruction of Tantus, destruction of maybe some extra secrets of Palpatine's plans. That'll be a very solid ending for a show that's had very solid season finales. I can't add too much more about the cavalry aspect. I do also think it's going to come from within. And I think a lot of it is going to be done by Omega more so than the rest of the Bad Batch. She's going to let loose the Zillow Beast, and that's going to start a chain reaction. We've seen that type of thing a lot in Star Wars before, whether it's the Wrath Tars and Force Awakens or the Fathers and Last Jedi or uh, a variety of other things we've seen throughout the history of Star Wars. You see a lot of these like, let's let loose the animals and have this distraction while we escape type of thing. That is going to come into play and you're going to see a lot of that unfold. I personally would love to see what else is in store in the vault because of that. Like if the Zillow starts wreaking havoc in the vault, let's see some of the other crazy things that Palpatine has stored there. If we're going to treat it like legends, Palpatine had so many things stored in that vault, so many unanswered questions lying in there, secrets of the Sith, all these types of things that he kept there. And this is the early stages of Tantus early stages of the vault and we know he stores things in other places but i would love to see a lot of his maybe captured creatures in there like a menagerie of these mythical kind of creatures all in there that, that wreak havoc not just the zillow beast maybe the collection of force sensitive clones that we might see here an allusion to that what does hemlock have in that one section of the vault that we haven't seen since all the way back at the beginning of this show i'd like to see a lot of that revealed maybe a wink and a nod towards Sabaoth or Snoke, something that is just laying the breadcrumbs for what comes next. Because as I've said so many times in streams and on predictions, this show is going to end as a bad, bad show. There won't be any lore defining things that happen. There might be nods to things. There might be some things that satisfy us as, as fans who have followed this the entire time, but there's not going to be anything that, that, general audiences are going to have to be like, I got to watch the Bad Batch now because that time is over. If they were going to do that, it was going to be set up in either season two or the beginning of season three. It hasn't. It's not going. We're not going to reveal everything about Snoke in this. We're not going to reveal everything about the Sith Eternal. It might just be some breadcrumbs, but I'd love there to be some winks towards Legends, some winks towards the Thrawn trilogy. So much of the Thrawn trilogy is shaping what we're doing in canon right now. As we get deeper and deeper into the vault, as we infiltrate the vault, whether it's through the Bad Batch or Echo and Amiri, or whether it's just through Omega just escaping as things are falling apart around her, I'd like to see more of what Palpatine has locked away in secret in this highly, highly protective vault that nobody can get into. As for Hemlock, I think he's going to die too because he's been kind of the big bad of the last season and a half of the Bad Batch. I'd love to see Rampart start to maybe have something to do with his comeuppance. 
maybe use that as a way to get back into the good graces of the empire. But my ultimate dream for how Rampart goes out is that no, none of our characters take him out that we see a, a little post scene after this, a little epilogue of Palpatine returning to Tantus after it's completely destroyed and he kills him. And then we have kind of a look at what remains of Tantus. I'm hoping for that scene because I don't want Tantus to just be something that was a cool Easter egg in the bad batch. And now it's gone and we're never going to talk about it again. I'd love to see it come back in the Thrawn trilogy adaptation that we're getting in Ahsoka and the New Republic film. I'd love to see it play some type of role. Maybe it's a base that the Rebellion and the New Republic think has been destroyed, but secretly a lot of the stuff has been moved to a new location. Something like that would be pretty cool. I also think Crosshair is the most likely candidate to die, although I'm not completely sold that anybody's going to die considering how little f- emphasis we put on the Bad Batch in these last few episodes. It's been very much so Omega focused and then scattershot around a large variety of plot points. I could see Amiri dying as somebody who sacrifices herself to let everybody go. Echo has gotten a bigger role in the last couple episodes. I truly do not want them to kill Echo off. It would feel like such a waste to bring him back then make him like the least important member of the Bad Batch through two and a half seasons. Then he disappears for a season and now he's back and just dies. I really hope that's not the case, but I could see him possibly going. Crosshair would make the most thematic sense. His arc is the one that has been the most prevalent across all members of the Bad Batch from the first episode to now. It's carried over even to last episode with Rampart saying, I thought good soldiers followed orders. And he said, it depends who's giving the orders. And it was a great moment. I can't wait to see them build on that. And like you were mentioning with X2, I think we're going to see CX2. That's going to be a boss fight. But I think a little bit more is going to play out from that. Like we know we know the clones have been being experimented on for the CX program, but we haven't seen that since the end of last season, really. And so now when we get to see that again, the horrors of what that's become I'm hoping that has some type of effect on Crosshair and we've teased the entire season that maybe there's a little more to Crosshair than meets the eye. Maybe there is some type of mind control or or brain chip or whatever they're using to control the CX troopers, that type of mental torture that could activate in Crosshair and we could see that. All these ideas then go back to my first question that I posed, right? How long is this episode going to be? These ideas can't be fit into 24 minutes, especially if they're paced like this last episode where it was a great, well-paced episode in terms of uh, its action. But it was over like that, you know, and we didn't progress the plot. If this is only 24 minutes, which I am betting my money that it is because they have said, I feel like they would have really heavily promoted it if it, if it wasn't. And you guys might watch this video and it might be confirmed at this point because I feel like these videos come out on Mondays. If it hasn't been confirmed yet by Monday, I doubt it is longer. I think, uh, I do think that they would have put more marketing budget into promoting the finale if it was one, incredibly lore impactful, and two, an hour long, because this would be a reason to get people to go back and binge the rest of the Bad Batch that they haven't watched yet. So I don't think it's going to be more than 24 to 30 minutes. I'm hoping it's two hours. I want this to be a great long finale. That's awesome. And and wraps everything up with a pretty bow, but I don't yet. I don't necessarily buy that it will, Uh, but I do think an epilogue, some type of epilogue will pass the torch from the bad batch to Rex, whether that is just through echo or whether that is through maybe Omega joining echo and the crew, something like that. The bad batch joining echo and Rex, there's some, there's going to be something that passes passes the torch to whatever's next because it this can't be the end of this story. There's got to be more. And I'm looking forward to ultimately finding out what is that next step. So that's our predictions for this week's episode of The Bad Batch, the finale of the entire series. Let us know what you think is going to happen in the series finale in the comments below. If you haven't yet, like the video. really helps us out. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And again, join us. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific time, we go live and we discuss the Bad Batch finale and we will take all your questions, your comments, your theories about the future. We'll just discuss the Bad Batch for an hour and a half. It's a lot of fun. Make sure you join us for that. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you all next time.